Hello, this is Amber Pollock. This lesson is on foreign exchange rates. Here I have one US dollar and one British pound. They are both play money. We want to figure out how many US dollars it would take to buy a British pound. As explained earlier, one US dollar is set to two blue marbles. Arbitrarily, I'm going to set one British pound to four blue marbles. I could have set the British pound to a different color marble representing a different precious metal, but in these beginning lessons I wanted to keep everything simple. Perhaps we can do this in some later advanced lessons. So to exchange for one British pound, we need four marbles worth of American money. So four marbles worth of American money is two US dollars. So this is our exchange rate, one British pound for two American dollars. We can easily switch these around and see how at all times we always have four marbles worth. So this will be our exchange rate for our lessons. Hello, this is an advanced lesson on foreign exchange rates. We're going to ask a student if an British person came to America to buy peppers with one British pound, how many peppers can they buy? So to set this problem up, first explain to the student that in the British economy, they were able to grow one pepper. And I have here a pound representing that this is the British economy. In the American economy, and I have here a dollar to represent the American economy, they were able to grow four peppers. Whether or not it's one or four peppers doesn't really matter in this example. What, we're, what I'm trying to impress is that there's more supply in America of the peppers than in England. So in England we are going to say that one pepper is one pound. And in the American economy we are going to say that one pepper is 50 cents. In the corner here I have the exchange rate that we established earlier between American and British money, which is one British pound to two American dollars. So again the question is, how many peppers can a British person with a British pound buy in the, in the American economy? This problem presents what I call rational confusion. There are several variables to pick from and the student needs to know which ones are relevant and how they apply. Based on my experience, it is a common error to think that the exchange rate will be based on the average price of things. For instance, a person thinks that because it costs the English person one pound to buy a pepper in England, the foreign exchange rate must be set such that when they come to America, that one pound can still buy them one pepper. This is, however, wrong. I think many people think this because they think that the strength of a currency can be judged based on the average price of things. But this is wrong. There are many things that can affect the average price of things. For instance, in England, in our example, they have a harder time to grow peppers, and thus peppers are going to be more expensive. This is not a reflection on how strong or weak the currency is. It's a reflection on how strong or weak production is. So to answer this question correctly, the British pound must simply be converted to American money. As we can see, this one pound will convert to two dollars. The British person can then buy peppers with this money. At 50 cents a pepper, the British person can buy four peppers. Another way to see this problem is to remove the paper currency altogether. And just think of it in terms of the commodity that backs up the currency. If the British person has four marbles, which is what was backing up the British pound, and came to America, how many peppers can he buy? So he just straight comes to America with, this mar with these marbles. We had set 50 cents to one marble, so at 50 cents a pepper, the British person can buy all four peppers. An example I like to give is if a person lived near many cow ranches using gold, they can probably buy a hamburger fairly cheaply. However, if they went to the North Pole with the same gold, don't even consider what the exchange rate is or anything, 
the hamburger is going to be more expensive, they're going to have to use more gold to get the hamburger in the North Pole because there are not cattle ranches up at the North Pole. So it is possible by taking your currency to a different economy, you can actually gain an edge. What will give you an advantage is if your currency is strong or if the economy that you're going to has a large supply of the product that you want.